today from Annex, there are, are me, Jason Lee, the APAC Business Development Manager, and my colleague, Andy Wen, uh, the APAC Channel Sales Manager. Hi, Andy. Hello. Hi. That's great. And we are very honored that to have uh, Kevin, our old friends from VCA Technology. It's pretty early there, right, in the UK, Kevin? Uh, it's uh, 7 a.m. in the morning and it's a cold, wet, damp, gray day. So, yeah, looking forward to this. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah, so Kevin, would you mind introduce your team to, to us and to our audience as well? Sure. Thanks, for, thanks so much, Jason. So, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. My name is Kevin Waterhouse. I'm the Managing Director of VCA Technology uh, based in London. I have with me today Dr. Rob Dupree, who's our product manager, um, also based in London, and our technical manager, uh, Simon Addison. So today we're going to present to you our, our new NX embedded platform where we've taken the NX uh, server and embedded it in a, into a range of cameras. Um, to start with, we're going to have uh, Rob Dupree do a, a brief presentation on who we are, the analytics, as well as the configurations. And then we'll hand over to Simon, who will do a, a demonstration of a couple of the applications that we have. So I think it would be a good idea if we if we got started and let Rob take take the stage. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. And before we start, our uh, Kevin Rob, I believe after this webinar, we have actually several physical events that NX and VCA are doing together, right? Like uh, like like myself, I'm heading to to Seoul, Korea, uh, at the end of March. There's an exhibition called Second in Korea, so we will also demo the NX embedded camera and the AI camera at our boots. So perhaps I, I believe there are some yeah. other events in, in America, in Europe, and other countries. People could see how this work in life, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we 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 launched, I guess, the, the product at Intersec back in January in Dubai. Um, you know, we considered to be the world's first fully embedded NX platform in a camera, um, with app applications such as AMPR and face and analytics. So as well as the SECOM in Korea, we're also going to be showing it to ISC in, in Vegas, and there are probably about six shows around Europe that we're currently planning on doing some wow. joint presentations with because it is such a a big step and, and really to create this serverless uh, platform it's it's a, it's a fantastic opportunity for us all exactly exactly i saw several videos from intersect dubai actually i've been i've been very keen to learn about learn more about it it's crazy to run vms ai even facial recognitions or carplay recognition all inside one single ip camera yeah that that's really cool yeah. I, well, we're going yeah. to tell you all so, about it. So, um, yeah. Rob? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, thank you very much, everyone, and, and good morning, good evening, and, and uh, hello. Uh, yeah, my name is uh, Rob Dupre. I'm the product manager here at VCA. Uh, and today we're going to talk to you about NX Embedded. Uh, so, I'll start by giving just a very brief overview on uh, who VCA are and a little bit about our analytics. Um, then, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, IPAI camera hardware and the plugin architecture that's enabled us to do NX Embedded. Uh, then, I'm going to pass over to Simon, who's our technical manager, uh, who will give you a little bit more information about how uh, NX Embedded is set up uh, and then give a little demo hey, of uh, some of our applications. Yes. Hi, hey, Rob. Uh, did you mind to uh, show your face? I think that Hi. would be. Better, yes. <laughs> I can do that, I think. Uh, no, I'm not sure that would be better, Andy, but anyway, we'll um, try. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is very early, after all. <laughs> what can I yeah, say? No problem. You look handsome. Guys. Oh, you, you, you look different from my expectations, right? You're a doctor. Oh, wow, okay. nice. <laughs> Good different or bad different? It's definitely better, Kevin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So then, after we've done a little demo of um, the software running, and uh, we'll come back and have a little conversation about uh, what this really means for the industry. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about serverless technology solutions and how uh, the IP AI cameras and NX embedded kind of falls into that into those categories. Okay, so let's move on uh, with who VCA are. So we are a, a UK software developer and we've been around since 2012, which is when we started developing our analytics platform generally. And since then, uh, we have over a million and a half channels of those analytics running all over the world. And that includes on our cameras, it also includes um, on our server applications as well. 
When it comes to analytics, our ethos really is about kind of balancing three pillars. So we want to make sure that the analytics is easy to use. So whether that's simple to configure or easy to integrate with, uh, it has to work, and therefore it has to be accurate. Um, and it has to, of course, be cost effective. And so what we try and find the balance there is that, um, you know, you can have the best analytics in the world, but if it costs too much to deploy, if the hardware is too expensive, uh, or it's not very easy to integrate or not very easy to use, uh, it, it just simply won't be deployed. And so finding the balance there, I think, is very important. Uh, and it's really why we're so excited about uh, NX Embedded as a product, because it now means that we, or, or we believe this really um, represents a, a great balance between all three of these, having the, the VMS and the analytics on a single hardware device that's at the edge, um, yeah, creates a, a very interesting product. And I think hopefully you'll, you'll see that um, in the coming slides. Lastly, I just want to mention that we are owned by a, a Korean firm who UDP called UDP, uh, and they are the manufacturers of the camera range. Okay, so let's talk very quickly about um, some of our analytics. So VCA technology has a product called VCA Core. It is basically our analytics processing pipeline. Uh, and that's built up of three major components, um, the trackers, and I'll talk a little bit more about trackers in detail uh, in a second. Um, it's got our rules engine built into that. So that will allow us to do things like zone interactions, you know, person enters zone or crosses line, um, but it allows us also to do quite complex, uh, what we call logical rule combinations. So you could also do, you know, tell me when that person has been in that zone for a certain period of time and now has crossed over this line but hasn't gone into this area but is now turning left you know so really the options there are, are pretty much endless um, and when it comes to the trackers and rules what we're really interested in is the metadata that they produce whether that's event information or whether that's uh, you know the location of an object in the scene and that's the information that we pass over to NX uh, whether that's within NX embedded or, or on the VMS um, that's installed on a server so that allows you to see our objects on the screen. It allows us to generate the events and uh, allows you to deal with those inside uh, NX. So uh, th there's a couple of ways in which we can package the VCA core um, product. One of those is something called VCA NX, which is this is our server side application. Uh, and what's nice about this is you can take an existing camera deployment um, that's running uh, NX witnesses the VMS. You can install VCA NX on a, on a ser separate server or, or in some cases the same server um, and we can pull video from NX witness, we can process it and return the metadata back into it and that, that again is a well, we have made that as seamless as possible. So you, you basically just set the channel and we start producing the metadata uh, and then if you want to configure rules and do that as well then, then you can do that. Um, but yeah, the nice thing about that is we can upgrade ex existing installations if required uh, because we can be camera agnostic in that way. Um, the other major way we can package up VCA Core is in, in our Edge AI plugin. Uh, and this is basically bringing our analytics to our camera platform um, at the Edge. And it's the same plugin architecture that we use for um, NX Embedded. And again, that integration there is designed to be as seamless as possible. Okay, so I mentioned trackers, and I think it's worth mentioning here that, um, you know, we've been in the analytics game quite a long time, and I think, in our opinion, we don't believe that a single tracker can do every single different use case. You know, we have a lot of customers in a lot of different verticals, uh, and the requirements are just slightly too far apart, really, to get good accuracy from a single product, we, we believe. So we have a number of trackers. These are two of our main ones, one of them here being the deep learning people tracker. Uh, and the focus for that is very much about detecting people in, in busy scenes, typically in the kind of the retail environment. So you may need to have um, good tracking and rules uh, for things like occupancy or dwell time. Uh, and you could have a situation where you've got a store that's very busy um, and that, you know, you might only see, say, the head and shoulders of a person, for example, but you still need to keep hold of that person and, you know, be able to count them or, or generate rules off their behavior. And so this tracker is really developed around that concept and, and the training data for that it sort of mimics that um, and so you know that that is one solution for a, 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 a relatively broad but quite um, set use case and, and likewise we have our deep learning object tracker and that's a, a slightly more general tracker um, it detects not just people but also vehicles so we can do types like car van truck for example it detects things like bags and bicycles and 
We find that that from a use case standpoint addresses things like traffic applications um, and security applications. So again, we can apply rules to that. We can do stationary object detection. So you could use this, for example, to monitor a car park. So, you know, the use cases for this are much more broad, but again, the training data for this is, is focused on those particular applications. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the IPAI camera hardware itself, and then we'll talk a little bit about how the plugins work uh, and what plugin options are available. So the IPAI camera range um, is an extensive range of five meg up to 4K and beyond. Um, and from a camera form factor side, we, we pretty much cover most bases there. So whether that's a, a, a dome or a bullet or um, fisheye or 180 degree, 360 degree, multi-sensor, um, whether you're looking for different modalities, RGB, IR, thermal, we, we pretty much have a camera um, that's, that fits the bill. And, and on the left-hand side here, we can see uh, these are cameras, a subset of our cameras that are available now. Uh, and on the right hand side here, we've got some cameras that are coming in the first couple of quarters um, of 2023. So, um, and that's really to illustrate our, our roadmap. Um, and so I think generally speaking, we have quite a good open dialogue with both our customers specifically, but also the market at large. Um, and really the focus there is about developing solutions that the market needs and the customers want. And so, and that really covers both within our hardware, making sure that we have a camera product, for example, that fits the bill, but also from an analytics standpoint as well. So we, again, I personally have, have long conversations with our customers about what their use cases are. Do we have a product that suits that or do we need to have a look at developing something? Something new for that uh, and as a result we have new um, analytics that are in development around things like fall detection and aggressive behavior for example that we hope will eventually come to the camera range as well so the nice thing about the IPAI camera range is that it's built on a on a standardized platform which means that all of the cameras that we've, we develop are in the IPAI range um, will support NX embedded uh, and they also support the ability to, to have um, internal storage of up to one terabyte Okay, so we've talking about we've spoken a little bit about the camera hardware. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the platform itself that enables this to to work. So, our cameras are built on an umbrella uh, platform, and that provides a, a CPU system that's that's powerful enough to do um, our our kind of camera running and the firmware. But it also provides hardware acceleration for doing things like our our analytics. So that allows us to do our deep learning trackers i.e. the deep learning people tracker, or the deep learning object tracker, as well as AMPR and MMCR functionality and face recognition all on the same platform. And the plugin architecture allows us to develop these little applications that you can load onto the camera um, that provides flexibility about what you want this camera to do. Uh, and so one of the other plugins we've developed alongside uh, our Edge AI analytics platform is, of course, NX Embedded. And really what that is, is a full version of the NX media server running on the camera. Uh, and I'll show a little bit more about that in a second. Um, but uh, yeah, the plugin architecture allows us to kind of compartmentalize uh, what we want to do and allow the user to kind of turn off and on features as, as required. Obviously, the, the software that we can run on the camera is very important, but the metadata the cameras produce is also very important. And so um, we also have applications that can consume that metadata. Uh, we have a, an application called VCA Forensics, for example, and that's a forensics metadata search that takes our um, tracking information uh, and allows us to do searches and filters to try and um, find an object of interest. And then like, likewise, we have something called Retail Trend, which is our business and uh, business intelligence retail reporting and uh, dashboarding application. And that again, pulls our metadata um, from cameras or, or from other sources of our analytics and allows us to kind of uh, amalgamate them into uh, information for our customers. Okay, so let's drill down a little bit more into um, specifics on the, uh, the plugins. So, in some respects, there's not a huge amount to say about NX Embedded. It is, as far as a user is concerned, a full version of the NX Witness VMS. So that provides you for that camera, um, the video storage allows us to store the metadata and events locally on site on, on the camera itself. Um, and through the NX Witness client, uh, you can then do all of the kind of search functionality, the video retrieval, everything you would normally do, you have uh, the ability to do uh, with this instance of, of NX Embedded. And so 
the nice thing about this is, is it's a compartmentalized solution. So typically we would suggest that an instance of edX embedded handles a particular camera um, and then through the NX witness client, you can bring those together uh, and, and form a kind of a state of, of many of these little instances of, of uh, NX embedded, but importantly review them as if there are a single set of cameras. Okay, so we've spoken about the um, the VMS on camera, and obviously that can record the video from the camera and provide re um, retrieval options for that. Um, but really, the power comes from the integration of our analytics and linking our uh, event metadata and our metadata about our objects to the video that that VMS um, is recording. And so we've got a couple of examples of how that works here. So we have a face recognition component of the Edge AI uh, plugin. So inside the camera, you can define a number of face profiles. Um, and then the camera, whenever it detects a face, will basically do a recognition and say, OK, does this person match any of the, the people in my face profile list? Um, and once we've kind of analyzed that, what we're essentially doing is adding metadata that to that detected face and then pushing that information to um, NX Embedded. So when you then access the uh, the metadata inside NX Embedded through the through the client, we have snapshots of our, our person, our faces that we've detected, uh, and any information that the camera has um, detected or recognized uh, is, is associated with that person. So Jason here is our, is our CTO. We've got information about him as a person we've uploaded an image he's part of the r d group for example um, and as a result now in inside nx we can see snapshots of when jason has appeared in this particular camera uh, we can see information about you know that it is jason and which research group he is we can search by um, name for example or group if we wanted to um, and of course we can pull back the the video for that particular snapshot i can click on it and i can see um, the video that is associated with that particular snapshot in addition to recognition, uh, the face work inside the plugin also does age and gender. Uh, so we can associate again with a detected face, uh, an age and a gender is detected. And so that can be used for things like demographics. We would use that information inside our retail trend plugin, for example, uh, and again, allow us to pull information and, and, and associate more data with a particular object. Uh, and again, that would all be viewable and searchable within, uh, within NX. Okay, so we've spoken a little bit about face. So AMPR, so automated number plate recognition and make model color recognition. Again, this is another component of the Edge AI plugin. Uh, and this is uh, some samples set up from a, a customer of ours where we're, we're monitoring the entrance to their car park. Uh, and again, I think one thing that's worth mentioning here is that the, the plugins are running on any of our cameras. So there may be some settings to tweak about making sure that the camera parameters are, are correct for your use case, but ultimately the camera allows us to do this, whether or not it's a, a bullet or a, you know, a, a, a micro dome or whatever it would be, you know, each camera is customizable to do pretty much um, anything with regards to the analytics. So uh, here we've got the AMPR information monitoring um, any vehicle that comes in. We're, we're extracting license plate information. We're also recognizing um, the brand, model and color of the vehicle. So that's not a lookup based on, in the UK, it would be our DVLA. It's, it is a an appearance-based model recognition to say that, okay, this is a, a Toyota Camry, for example, and this is a, a Tesla, for example. And again, once we're detecting the object and extracting and, and applying that metadata, that is then consumed by NX Embedded and allows us to do our, our same kind of searches. We can view all the number plates, we can click on the, uh, the, the snapshot and get the video back, uh, and as well as, as doing any searches about, um, you know, yeah, based on the number plate or the, the type of vehicle, all of that information again is, is indexed and searched. I mentioned some of the applications that consume our metadata. Uh, so I just want to talk a little bit about VCA forensics and how that kind of ties into the, the IPAI camera architecture. So forensics is basically a solution where um, we have a small server that pulls in all of the um, object metadata from our IPAI cameras. Um, and allows the user uh, to essentially filter that information down to find a particular object of interest. So what we're, what we're aiming for here is in scenarios where you may have 50, 60 cameras on a site, for example, and you, know, you could have anything up to 
35 40 000 detected objects in, in an hour uh, and so if you're looking for a particular person you know reviewing that footage manually is is you know almost impossible and so what forensics does is provide a quick way to filter down to only find or only show um things that are matching your search if you're looking for a person with say a blue top and black trousers uh, you know hopefully what we're doing is taking that 50 hours of footage and, and throwing that down into maybe a few minutes um, so a, 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 a user can basically find what they're looking for as quickly as possible. And how that kind of works within um, our plugin architecture and, and why it's so important is because we are obviously um, uh, making available the metadata from the, the camera so external applications can pull it. So our forensic server here is connecting to or pulling the, the metadata from our Edge AI plugin. So that's pulling object information, where it is in the scene, uh, the color, the type, for example. Uh, and once you've done a search and you found an object of interest, we can then go to the, the instance of uh, the NX Media server and pull back the, the high resolution, high frame rate video that represents that particular object of interest. And again, that's all done through um, APIs that are available uh, through the camera. So again, NX Embedded provides us a way of, of pushing all the analytics and VMS requirements at the edge um, and allows us to do something like forensic servers at a much smaller rate. We don't need to have big servers to process that. It's all done on the camera. Okay, so quick summary of, of what we've been discussing. So um, we have a, a very wide range of cameras um, across a, a huge set of modalities and, and form factors. Um, the analytics uh, plugin provides a number of different options, whether that's uh, you know sort of standard object-based analytics to AMPR to face. Uh, and, and because you have the ability to kind of chop and change what you want to use with what you want to detect, um, it provides a, a very flexible um, camera solution that you can deploy. Uh, it is about as seamless as integration with NX as possible. So once you've selected your analytic that you want to run on the camera, NX, uh, our version of NX Embedded, basically you can consume that metadata already. We, we've kind of simplified that process as much as possible. So your metadata will just start appearing inside NX pretty much straight away. Um, all our cameras are uh, NDAA approved. They've developed, they're manufactured in um, Vietnam and, and uh, South Korea. And again, the software is developed by us in the UK. Uh, and really, I think what we want to get across here is, is those really kind of tying it back to those three uh, pillars in terms of, you know, easy to configure. So the, the analytics and the, the way that NX Embedded work is, is pretty much seamless. Um, it's cost effective because, you know, we have a single one-off perpetual license for our analytics and plugins. Um, the cameras, of course, are, are very reasonably priced. And, and because you are now moving away from the requirement of a, a server that's doing your analytics, for example, or even your VMS and video storage, the cost of ownership, the cost to deploy is, is obviously reduced. And we, we think that's a, yeah, we think that's great. Okay, I think that's enough from me. Uh, I'm going to pass over to uh, Simon, who's our technical manager, who's going to go on a little bit more about um, NX Embedded and hopefully provide a, a demo of it running. Uh, uh, Rob, Simon, before we move into the live demo session, would you mind me asking some of the questions? Of course not. Yeah, go ahead. That's great. That's great. Yeah, so that's that's a lot of information you share in, in just 20 minutes. Right? I'm, I'm really happy to see VCA Forensic and and the retail trend is already there. Like while we were doing the webinar last time, we were talking about when, when these two are ready, let's do another webinar about the forensic and trend. It's happy that you are announcing like, all these three cool integrations all available right now. Yeah. And so right. one of my first question is, uh, so like, uh, uh, I assume after we run the NX server on the camera, how mm -hmm. the user interact with it? It's just like NX server on a server or on a computer, right? Correct. Yeah. So, so really, we we um, we have designed this so as far as a user is concerned. Once you're using the NX Witness client, basically, you, you a user wouldn't know whether it's NX on camera or whether it's uh, NX on server. It is. I. It's designed to kind of mimic as closely as possible what you would normally do. So, um, yeah, we hope that kind of barrier to entry isn't there really. Got it. And I assume it's also using like the standard versions for NX, right? Like we, we have monthly patches, we have public available versions. So it's the same ones. 
Yeah, so so we're the, the outstanding work we do need to do is, is uh, manage how we would update um, NX on the camera and, and keep that kind of nice seamless uh, cross the state um, versioning because obviously you need to have the same versions to merge uh, camera, uh, sorry, to merge VMS instances. But yeah, that's what we're working on that at the moment. But yeah, it would, we, we keep that up to date and we will re release plugins regularly to maintain that. Got it. Got it. And and also one more question. Oh, by the way, everybody, if you have any questions, feel free to. There is a Q and A session. Feel free to ask your questions there, and we will raise it to to Rob, Kevin, and the Simons. Okay, just just myself. I I learned this new information. I got some of the questions. Maybe you you have the same too. Okay. And about the plugin, you mentioned there are several plugins. So we, we know when we're installing the plugin with NX server, there's a process like copy the plugin file to a specific folder. Like I assume if the user are buying the AI camera with predefined plugin like facial recognitions, you, you will install like everything and then ship to the user and they only need to do the configuration works, right? They don't need to install the plug. Do they need to install the plugin themselves? Uh, I think we are going to have options where um, both the plugins and a particular storage solution can be um, can be added during manufacturing. So I believe there is options to do that. But actually, what Simon's going to show you is is the actual way of adding the plugin is is very simple as oh. well. So even in some scenarios okay. where okay. it's not there, we can we can add it very very easily. It's um, yeah, it's all agnostic in that respect. Yeah, got it, got it. That would be great. That would be really great. Yeah. Hold on. There's a there's a, a questions from from James. Yeah, uh, there's a question. Say, will there be public details of the NX on camera be available? We haven't seen that on the internet yet. Yeah. So, do you guys plan to announce that on your websites or with any other form of marketing? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we've just we've got the uh, integration um, page up on the uh, NX website, so you'll you'll see the ability to download oh, those yes. plugins <laughs> on there. Uh, and yeah, I think I think a lot of what we're doing at the moment around the webinars and and our websites is is, is about promoting this. So um, yeah, you'll see a lot of information on, on things like LinkedIn and our website coming uh, very shortly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. Yeah, everyone, I will I will paste the NX integration marketplace link to our chat session. So everybody feel free to search for VCA on that page. OK. All right. So, yeah, I think that's so far the, the questions we have. So let's uh, move to Simon. And then again, everyone, if you have any question, please text to the Q&A sessions and we, we, we are always monitor that. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. So if you could make me a presenter so I could just share the screen. Oh, be... yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, let me do that. Simon, there we go. All right. Brilliant. So and uh, as well, Simon, can we see your face? <laughs> I think it's more, you know, interactive. Hi, hello. <laughs> nice to see you, Simon. Uh, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, like a soft cushion. <laughs> okay, so um, so what I'm going to do is just carry on from Rob. So my name is Simon. I am the technical manager at VCA. And what I'm going to do is just give you an overview of the installation um, and architecture of the LX embedded solution. And then I'm just going to also show you a, a, an overview of how you do the, the plugin configurations just a very brief uh, cover of it. And then we're gonna sort of dive straight into some examples of AMPR and face recognition from NX. So they'll be completely live. They won't be canned in any way. We're just going to pick some random times and, and see what information we get. So fingers crossed, it's all gonna go particularly well. So what I'd like to cover first is just to briefly go over our existing integration that we have. So we've got uh, we've got many different ways of working with NX, and one of the best ways we have at the moment is our fully integrated VCA NX product. So in this computer, this is a computer-based solution, and it uh, uses our AI analytics engines, and um, it allows you to identify objects and track them throughout the scene, and passes that data straight into NX for for all sorts of uh, analysis later on. So camera rules for any forensic searching that you might do from inside NX using the metadata. 
So just to give you an idea of what that looks like, so um, that looks like, uh, as, as Rob was saying earlier, the idea of our, our server-based analytics solutions is agnostic. You can run any camera into it. We pull the feeds from NX that gets fed into our system. We have a, um, a configuration um, system in order to configure analytics, which has been designed to look like NX in order to make the, um, make the experience as easy to, uh, easy to use as possible for the users. So there really does look like it's seamless. You're inside NX, the, the configuration stuff can be done inside NX, but we've created this, uh, this configuration menu in order to mimic the NX experience. So then the metadata is produced by our system and it's passed back into NX for, uh, for annotation on the screen. And you can also configure the rule settings inside NX to react how you might like to. So some of the good advantages on this is that the VCA NX is a modular type of architecture, which means that it can be installed on a completely separate hardware platform. So you can separate your loadings. So you could have a computer completely dedicated to analytics while you've got a lightweight computer handling your VMS um, services. And one of the other benefits is that you can also spread the load as well. So if you had many channels of uh, analytics that you need to service, you could spread that across multiple servers. Those multiple servers are all feeding one VMS service. So then just to move on to the camera. So what we did with the camera is pretty much the same as we actually did with, with a computer-based solution. So with a camera, the camera itself is the platform that we're using to run all of our services. So everything is bundled in there. Everything is self-contained and distributed to the edge. So the idea being is that we have our, our VCA Edge, which is our on-camera analytic solution, which is almost exactly the same as our server-based solution in terms of what it can offer. So it can offer all of our AI tracking solutions that we have. But what happens inside the camera is video feeds are passed to and from each other. They're analyzed. The metadata is passed directly into the NX embedded solution, which, as Rob was saying, is, is all intensity to a fully featured NX uh, server solution. All of that information is all stored on the camera. Uh, you use usually an, a, a camera's internal SD card in, to do that, and that SD card can be upgraded and can be changed as you need, as you see fit. And then all of that metadata also, because you've got it stored on this NX embedded, you have all the features of the NX witness server as well, which allows you to store data in different places as well. So I'm sure that'll be mentioned later on how you can push data to cloud, for instance, you can push it to a central location for off-camera storage. So the installation and configuration of embedded is it's, it's designed to be it's as simple as possible as, along with our analytics solutions as well. So as Rob was mentioning, you can, some of this stuff can be provided from production. So we will provide options to allow the, uh, the plugins and to allow embedded and to allow the uh, micro SD cards to be installed at production. But if you were installing this um, uh, yourselves, the idea would be is that you would simply go to our menu system inside the camera. You would select the option to upload a plugin. It would be a file for installation, very similar to just about everything else these days. And you would just simply upload the file. NX embedded would be installed on the camera and then you could start using the NX client to configure it. When you're selecting the micro SD cards, so you see there we, we use the QD101 range of SD cards. So these are surveillance graded micro SD cards that have been designed for high capacities and for high transfer rates. And I believe that the lifetime working uh, working span of these SD cards is upwards of sort of 10 years. So once you've done the installation, the idea is you then add your analytics. So <clears throat> if the analytic options aren't already available on the camera, they can be added in very much the same way. Um, again, Rob was saying earlier, all of our cameras provide the same analytics opportunity. So they are they can all provide um, the, the, our, our DL trackers that we provide, our AI analytic trackers, and they can all run the NX embedded solution as well. So the idea is that you can pick one of your, these analytics and any combination of them. You could be the DL object tracker, which is our, our AI based tracker for objects within a scene, or it could be anything from the facial recognition software, which we're going to demonstrate in a few minutes, or the AMPR software. So I had a quick question. Yeah. So, sorry to interrupt. Do you mean we can run not only one object, uh, uh, one, one algorithm 
we can run multiple algorithms at the same time. For example, the DO tracker plus facial recognition. So some of these you have you can run you can run one or the other. So we're making those final changes and final adjustments at the moment. So we'll be able to give you some idea later on. Mm -hmm. So we're working on whether there is scope to run multiple uh, analytic services at once or whether it will just be the AMPR camera. So for instance, if you were running the AMPR plugin, then adjustments are made to the camera to allow it to work at night time, which means that it really becomes a special purpose camera because it's designed to filter exactly. out headlights. So which means it's it's not very good for IR detection at night because you can't see anything. So, you know, it. so not, not just the computing power, but also the camera parts also need to be added adjusted for the use cases yeah you know the face recognition camera will force you to put the camera in a particular position to be able to detect faces mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so once you've picked your you. there can be some minor configuration which you need to do it's just simply a case of turning it on defining a zone that you want to track for objects within uh, and then you really just you pick nx witness up and you start using it so we mentioned earlier the experience is exactly the same for or our NX embedded solution as it would be for NX server. You can, there are some web pages configurations that allow you to see it, which is exactly the same as what NX offers already. And you can just pick up an NX client and start um, start finding those cameras, those NX witnesses, and you can start grouping them together into sites or, or, or any other corporate solution you might like, anything that you want to do to group those cameras together. Okay, so um, so what I'm going to do is just, we're gonna flick straight into some live presentations. So I want to show you an AMPR and face recognition camera that we've had up and running. So I'm just gonna flick over to NX Witness. Uh, hopefully you guys can see this now. So we're on a NX Witness client, which I've got loaded. I've got two cameras which are available to me. So the first one we're gonna have a look at is the AMPR camera. So as I just log in, it's worth noting that this camera is, this is all connected remotely. So I'm not, uh, I, uh, this is all across the web and I'm pulling the data straight from the camera in these cases. Um. Simon's frozen, right? It does look like it, yes. Oh, yeah. Hello, Simon, can you hear us? <laughs> I'm just, it's Rose. <laughs> he, he, he just sent me a message to say his, uh, his network went down. He'll be one minute to reconfigure. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sure, sure, no problem. Uh, I can so add while just... we're waiting, yeah, so I was just going to add a bit more context on the multiple um, applications running simultaneously. Um, so, as Simon mentioned, yeah, in, so, in some certain cases, you wouldn't you wouldn't want to run multiple applications at the same time. So the AMPR is a good example. Um, in actual fact, the facial recognition stuff works in tandem with our deep learning people tracker. So in actual fact, that is running at the same time. Um, and so you can do rules uh, where you basically have a, a zone which is detecting people and then also kind of an add on to that. So, OK, well, I'd also like to detect the faces for the objects that enter that zone. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think in most cases you, you wouldn't need to run both, Like you're not going to run AMP and facial recognition on the same camera um, and if you did want to run both you can and of course you can have both the analytics and of course NX embedded running simultaneously as well. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Rob, Rob a quick question so can a uh, question about VCA forensic asked by Bala mm -hmm. so can, can can it do like people tracking based on the face they detected or the person that the color of clothes they're wearing and then is there a like a search of tracking modules with VCA forensic. So for, forensics is basically designed to um, to use our metadata to filter down objects of interest. So the face stuff will definitely be coming. Um, it's not in there at the moment. That's predominantly because we've only just finished the the face plugin. But for us, it, forensics mm -hmm. is really designed to leverage the metadata we produce. So at any time we add a new feature okay. or function, that will then come in there. Um, and so in terms of searching by color yeah 100 percent that works and um, you basically can define a certain kind of color profile top half red bottom half blue for example um, and we will show you all of the objects that that you know replicate that across your or carrying a color of bag as well i guess what you could say 
Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so again, bag being detected of the DLOT, uh, one of the newest features of forensics is you can say, okay, show me all the people that have a bag that have jeans and a, and a red top, for example. So you, you can get very specific. Uh, and, and we have examples where we have, as I said, estates of 40 cameras in the UK where you, you, you do have 30,000 detected objects in an hour and you can get down to finding mm -hmm. four or five objects of interest within a few minutes. It's, it's, it's back. very early. Yeah, so I'm very sorry about that. Typical that my computer decided to stop working. <laughs> we'll come back. If I can carry on, if you could make me a presenter, I can share my screen and- Oh uh, yeah, sure, sorry, I forgot about it again. Yeah. Right. All right. Fantastic. Cool. Okay, so uh, so what we've got here, so hopefully you can see the screen here. So I've got uh, an NX client loaded yep. and I'm showing a camera which we position for AMPR detection. So with this installation, it's really simple. All we've really done is drawn a zone within inside our software and we said that's where we want to pick up cameras. Uh, that's where we want to pick up license plates. And then what happens from there on in is the camera simply, the analytics plugin for AMPR picks up the license plate and it passes the metadata straight onto NX. So it's all stored within NX, and you can do all the normal searches that you might like to do. So if I just select objects from the top right, what you see is a whole load of license plates already being displayed. So these are plates which have already been picked up by the system, and if we just double click on one of them, it goes to the camera and loads up the image for that camera. So this is all brought across from the camera itself. And we select another one. So what you've got here is a good example as well about how uh, how we've modified the camera to work on night position. So with this one, this is at around five o'clock in the afternoon. So it's starting to get a little bit dark over here and we've already got headlights turned on. So we've made adjustments to the cameras and it's and it's not, nothing special about the camera. It's a normal um, bullet camera that we've got loaded on here. So we just made some changes in order to try and filter out that headlight distortion that occurs. And the result is, is, for instance, this image here, which is at night time, where we have filtered out that, that light completely and it allows us to clearly see the license plate. So what we can also do now is that we can, we can move across to the advanced sections in forensics and we can start doing some, some searches as well. So here we've got a, a list of all of the plates which has been detected. We could say, for instance, do a search for a license plate beginning with WU. So immediately it calls up the plate and then we've got the footage that uh, that accommodates that. So you can see very clearly what's going on. You've now got the features of going to that, uh, that point in time, viewing the rest of the information. And if there were more instances of this, of this car appearing, then we could search for that as well. So if I did a new search for something, to maybe uh, something begin with FV, we can see there's loads of instances of this car appearing. It's the, it's the van for the company that works there. And we can see all the instances that this occurs. So we can now start to really search through. We can see the point where it's entered, the point where it's left, and all the other all the other points in between. So it just brings all of that metadata in, in probably very much the same way that that, uh, that the users might experience searches in NX already. It just allows us to unify all of that location where the searches are done. So then the other thing I wanted to show you as well is the, uh, the face recognition one. So if I just move over to that camera. So again, this camera, what we're doing is we are connecting across the, the internet to this camera and then pulling back the information. So this is all brought from that camera, of course. So this camera is positioned in, a, um, in one of our offices that we've got. And you can see on the right hand side straight away, we've got images being picked up where there are faces. So the way this works is that this is identifying people within the scene and then the face is, trying to, is, is sort of matched against the profile that is stored on the camera. If the profile is matched, then the additional metadata is passed across into NX to, to give information such as a name or even a department that uh, the individual might be in. Part of that uh, analytics that we do is some, some age and gender analytics as well. So just to filter down further, what we can do is we can select any type and we can select the face, uh, the face uh, object detection from, from NX. So what that will do is it stops NX from working and I have to restart it again. So bear with me a second. Okay. 
and we'll connect to the right line. And it looks like the camera has just gone offline for me as well. The camera is, is offline, happening? yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'll see if it comes online in a second, but otherwise the experience is very much the same. So you'll be able to see faces. There you go, it's just come on. And we'll just see if we can get that up and running again. And I'll pick the wrong camera again. Let's get that going again. So we'll just wait for that to connect up. We'll bring up the camera. Okay, so as we select face, we'll just pause it to allow it to speed up a little bit. As we select faces here, you can see them coming up on the right hand side. So, for instance, we've got a male there who's, we did some analytics on that and we estimate them between to, to be around 24 years old and definitely a male. And as we come further down the list, we can see that there are other people being detected. So, for instance, there we've got a female. And we've also matched this female against a profile which is stored on the camera and that has identified it and also match them to a group as well. So this is all really quick and, and very easy to access. So again, this is all being brought across from the camera itself. And then we've also got the advanced features of your NX analytics as well. So what we can do in here is we can, for instance, select face again, just allow us to filter down. And we'll just wait for it to, to bring back some results. So because we've got all of this metadata inside NX already, we can perform searches for anything from names to groups, ages to, uh, to gender as well. So if for instance, we have this footage and we wanted to search for James, so where the profile is matched up with James, it will bring back every instance where that person was matched up. And then it will also preview that playback on the right hand side. So this is James and we've identified him as a 40 year old male, luckily. So we could also decide that we want to search for everyone inside our R&D group, which we've defined. So now we can bring back everyone with inside the R&D group. And again, it allows us to do that video playback. And again, you, you, as I said, because the metadata is all with inside NX, it's all searchable. So we could search for everyone that's 24 years old. Or if we wanted to, everyone that was female. And this is all brought back straight from the camera uh, that's stored all on the SD card. So you can see it's very, very much, it's very, very, very responsive. Simon, a quick question. So when, when we are enrolling the face to the database, are we also using the, are we also using the camera firmware interface? Is there a page right there? Or there's another app application like the VCNX application that we use to enroll the face or, or the card plate? No, so to set up the face profiles, you would use the interface of the camera to set that up. So um, we haven't, I, mm -hmm. I don't know if there's plans to look at creating a, uh, a VCA, uh, uh, an NX plugin to allow you to configure that information, but at the moment you would define it all within the camera. So you could easily configure, Got it. Got it. for instance, to take you to the camera, or you could configure, you could just go to the camera settings and go to the web page from there. To the web page. Got it. Clear, clear, clear. And, uh, and that is, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Simon. Yeah, we got, we got several questions. I will, I will start by, by, by the orders. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So uh, also, I think there's a lot of uh, interest about the VCA forensic, right? One of the questions is, uh, can we can we track a, a, a path of a person that are detected by multiple cameras in a store, for example? So we, we don't have um, we don't have the option of linking uh, sort of the like an ID between people between cameras. Uh, but what you can do is search for mm -hmm. people with the same properties across cameras. And and again, if you've got it's it's sort of it's relatively logical right if you have a if you do a search for quite a specific thing you know person with a yellow top and blue trousers for example it is very likely that you'll only get results for one or two people and it will be clear that they are going across camera uh, if you're searching for someone with you know a black mm. top and blue trousers then of course you'll get a few more results but in our experience it, it tends mm. to be quite quite easy to find the same person across camera 
Got it. Got, yeah, I, I, I just saw the VCA forensic interface on the left hand side. There is a options for you to pick one or multiple cameras, right? If you pick multiple cameras, that means the attributes you are given to the system will be searched throughout those, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And and typically, you know, time, the, the time frame and the number of cameras you search are the, the best kind of filters that you'll get anyway. And then, of course, using our metadata mm -hmm. um, goes from, you know, thousands of objects to a few. And uh, yeah, it's it's been it's been really well received. And the fact that you can pull the data directly from a camera and um, provides real flexibility mm -hmm. and actually not just a camera. So you, you could hypothetically, and this, this kind of ties into the kind of serverless solutions part of things where, you know, if it, let's say, for example, you've got a um, an estate that's got 20 or 30 cameras, you've spec your servers for storage and analytics for that number of cameras. Um, you can have forensics pull the data from that. If you need to add another five mm -hmm. cameras, for example, rather than throw new hardware together and new server and upgrade all of that stuff, you can just put five mm -hmm. IPAI cameras in, we can pull the data in the same way, mm. NX will treat it as the same, forensics will treat it as the same, and it becomes mm. really flexible, really flexible. Mm. That's true, yeah. And there's a questions about cost, I would say, uh, Kevin, perhaps you can put your your your, your emails on, on the screen so that uh, our partners who are interested in the costing or there are questions about the data sheet, the spec sheet. So uh, for, for this kind of more detailed or a bit sensitive kind of information, please uh, feel free to reach out to uh, to Kevin or maybe uh, to Rob as well, right? So please reach out to them by email it, 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 and the VCA team will be yeah. more than happy to. Yeah, yeah, I've just put the central email on info at vcatechnology.com and all of those come to, to the team. So we'll all look at that and we'll respond to those. So there, there's, there's obviously <clears throat> different pricing models, but as, as Rob mentioned, they are all perpetual licenses, so they're one off. Um, and there's different mm -hmm. pricing models for, for the cameras as well. Got it, got it, okay. And another question comes with analytics as well. So uh, what if the accuracy is not the best at the beginning? Is there a continuous learning process, for example, by updating the the software to make it more accurate? Yeah. Uh, absolutely. So, I mean, a, a, a good chunk of our focus is about um, maintaining and improving the algorithms we have. So we always have a, an ongoing data annotation and collection process. We're always trying to, you know, I think I think most of these algorithms, um, when it comes to deep learning and appearance based models, people don't necessarily understand that data really is like 95 percent of the game there. So um, we because we've been in the industry a long time, we have a, a, a very large library of, of the video that best represents our customer needs. And, um, you know, so we're not we're not scraping the Internet for people, you know, uh, images of cars and things like that because they're not representative of what you will see in a CCTV camera and so we build our data set specifically for that and and as you say we we release maybe two times a year and plugins will come out and you'll be able to update that and you will get all the advantages of our new models and um, as part of that perpetual license mm -hmm, mm -hmm. got it got it um, there's a question I think it's about NX uh uh, Wei Zhuang asks, is NX server just a, no, uh, just a software running on a normal PC? Can it stream video with normal internet? Is there poor forwarding or VPN needed? Yes, I'll, I'll answer that, right? Uh, and Andy, if you want to add some, please help, okay? So yeah, NX, NX server application is a, is a software application you can run on different type of computers, right? We support Windows, we support Linux, and VCA is one of the best example. We support ARM as well. That's one of the very rare advantage of NX, right? We just we not only support x86 architecture, we also support the ARM architecture. And that makes the presentation today, right? We could run the VMS server, the full feature VMS server on, on IP camera, a very powerful IP camera from VCA, right? And once you install the NX server to no matter a camera or a computer, uh, we have a mechanism behind that will auto discover connected on with video streams from cameras, from DVRs, from MVRs, right? So if the camera and the server, NX server are in the same subnet, we will discover them and you will be able to see them via the NX client. If it's not in the same subnet, if you configure the network properly, you will be able to add the video stream to the server with their DDNS or with their static IP address. Right, so that's how we 
digest video stream. We also have APIs to string our video to third-party application like the VCA NX server-based application. They can use our video API to pull RTSP string from the NX server. We are designed to be a media server, so it could save the camera load to be pulled by various kinds of third parties, right? So with our RTSP API, we use the default pool 7001. Of course, you can change that based on your, your, your security protocol, right? But by default, we are using 7001. 7, so with our video API, our server, our pool, the camera ID, what resolution you want, then you can pull the video away. And then you can show that on, the, on your website. You can use that with your third-party applications. Okay, that's basically what we do. Yeah, we're the video platform. We work with VCA. They are the value-added partners of our software. Okay. Yeah. And I'm sorry, there's another one. Oh, there's a question. I think it's more about the algorithm. Uh, is Do you guys plan to have the algorithm to identify the dimensions or measurements of an object? This is a partner, an index partner from India. They're working on several warehouse projects. So I think that's why he's been asking about people tracking across multiple camera in a large area and also an algorithm to measure the dimension of a parcel, for example. Yeah. Sure. So um, I, I think there's a couple of things there. So we actually already have uh, something we call calibration, which allows you to, for a given tracked ob object in a calibrated scene, estimate both its speed, its height and its uh, area. Um, the problem we have with those kinds of things is in, it's great as a kind of um, a guide for whether or not that's a large object or a small object, whether the object's going fast or small. It is because of the, um, you know, things like the, the profile of the camera lens, because of things like the distance, you know, lighting, all of those will have impact and effect on it. So um, the accuracy down to, you know, millimeters or centimeters, for example, is, is going to be challenging. Um, but if you want to know whether or not something is large or small or going fast or slow, especially, you know, we have warehousing projects with regards to things like tracking forklift trucks, for example, the health and safety, you know, is that truck going too fast? You know, that kind of stuff works really well. Um, and of course we can combine that with our logical rules to say, you know, truck moving too quickly and person in the scene, you know, raise an alarm or, or tell people to stop or whatever it would be. So okay. yeah, I think there's definitely options there. Um, and yeah, we'd love to speak to them about that. Just drop us an email and we'll, we'll gladly talk about um, what we can and can't do. I think that's uh, what one, I think, big aspect of what we do when it comes to analytics is is we are very honest about whether or not we can actually achieve what you want us to do you know it's it is important that analytics have limitations you know it's always been oversold and under delivered and and uh the reason we've been in business for so long is because you know we we try and maintain that dialogue with our customers and make sure that we're fitting the right thing for the right right task got it got it six slide rob yeah. Um, there's a question asking, is it possible to run the analytics, the camera and the NX embedded in a totally offline environment without internet? I, I think it's yes, right? We just have the camera, we have the workstation all in the LAN environment, and then the plugin does not require internet, so it can be totally offline. That's right. That's great. That's great. So uh, I'm sorry, it's pretty long. In case of in case of existing NX Witness system, what is the best way to add VCA AI? Add a camera to NX server, or to use the VCA as an independent camera and plus the VCA NX server applications, All right? I mean, either or, actually. I mean, that's the, the nice thing about it is yeah. flexibility. So um, yeah, <laughs> yeah in, in an existing deployment where you've got cameras and you've got your VMS set up and you've got the storage requirements, um, we would typically recommend that you add a server, an analytics server, and that takes care of, of that process. And that, again, is an edge-based server and, and it pulls the video from, um, from NX Witness. Uh, if you just want to add another camera or you want to run AMPR or something like that in a quite a specific environment, then yeah, throw an IPAI camera up. Um, you, you don't necessarily have to use NX embedded in that situation. You could you could have that running back to your central VMS server if you've got the capacity. But importantly, if you don't, you can do it all on the camera. So really any which way will, will work for us. Yeah, I think it's worth saying the reason why we've created this range of integrations into NX is to give every possible opportunity. So any scenario that the customer, the user mm -hmm. wants will, be, will fit into one of those pigeonholes. 
Yeah, yeah. I think that, for example, you've got four cameras, need video analytics, buying another extra computer might be worth it. But maybe if it's just one camera, a camera with AI would help. Uh, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Sean, so we have another. Oh, is there, is there a limitations on how many cameras can be added to the NX embedded camera? For example, three, four, is, does that based on, depends on the bit rate or the throughputs? Uh, is there some rule of thumb that you can share with us? Yeah, so it is um, interesting. We had the same question on, on Tuesday's one. So we would we would typically recommend that the NX embedded instance running on the camera just runs for that camera. Um, we wouldn't necessarily recommend that you start pulling other video sources into it. I mean, it is an edge device after all. It's not designed to, to be a kind of high, high throughput video processing device. So um, it is possible to do it. It is not recommended. Uh, so we, we would we would say, yeah, you, you really want to have either multiple instances of the cameras and each camera runs its own NX embedded instance. And if you've got existing IP cameras on, on site, then realistically that needs to go through a server. Uh, and that's predominantly down to just storage, you know, because the camera has up to a terabyte, but, um, you know, it is an SD card. And, you know, if you start putting four or five cameras through that, that SD card will get filled up pretty quickly, you know, and the lifespan of that card goes from, you know, the 120,000 hours that it recommends, which is around 10 years, right the way down to kind of two and a half years because you're running four times as much data through it. So yeah, it is definitely not recommended to run it that way. Um, and as I said, we would recommend existing IP cameras go through a, an existing VMS solution. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Clear, clear. Uh, Andy, I think you're muted. Yeah. Andy, hello? We cannot hear you, Andy. Andy. Hello, hello. I, I hello. guess. Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah. Ah, yeah. 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 So, uh, um, what, what, what if I use an NS embedded AI camera, but I don't run AI? Is it possible to, you know, collect some cameras to record together? Because I can foresee some projects like multiple site, right? Um, in in some in some like let's like say chain store chain store. Right. In some side, they just need two, three, four cameras, and uh, they don't want to put a, a VR there or a machine there. Right. So one camera, one uh, one NS embedded camera is enough to connect all the cameras to record it. Maybe they will not use AI or something. Is it possible? Yes, Andy. The cameras, the cameras come as a standard camera, uh, which you can have NX yeah. on there, of course, with with the uh, with the storage. And then you can, if you don't want anything else on it, you just take it as a camera. So that the, the structure uh -huh. of, the, of, of the product is that you can add the applications as and when you need them. So you could add AI, you could add AMPR, you could add face. But if you just want an NX embedded camera, just take the NX embedded part of it. Mm. Whether or not it would run four cameras, um, again, it sort of goes back to, I think hypothetically it probably could. Um, whether we would recommend it is another question. Yeah, so, I, don't really know okay. why you would, I don't know why you would want to really as well. If you have, you have four of our cameras, NX embedded would run on each of those cameras to store yep. the information. And then you would use NX client to merge them together into one site. So if you load up NX client, you would see just one site with four cameras. And you really wouldn't know that they were being recorded on separate uh, SD cards on each camera. They would just be merged into yes. one. That would be the way that the uh, the uh, architecture would go together for that site. Okay, and let's do it. no problem. Yeah, and yes, uh, there's a question asking, uh, can we merge the NX in the camera to the to the other NX server in the system? The answer is yes. Yeah, we just use camera as a computer to run our software application on it. Absolutely yeah, right. So it can be merged, Same it can as perform failover, things like that. Yeah, and maybe uh, Simon Rob, perhaps you can share with us, like uh, you, you guys are both based in, in, in London in the UK, right? And we have, like this, this session is mainly for our partners from APAC. So if, if they're interested in testing sample or, or further discussions on the sales part, do they, do they, do they talk to, to, to you guys from the UK or do they talk to your colleagues in, in, in Korea? Yeah, in the first instance, if, if they contact us through the info at PCA technology, um, we, we have a, okay. a couple of options then. We'll, we'll, we'll address those to, to other career or probably we got a sales guy now based in region in, in the Turkey Middle East area, so he'll probably pick these up. 
Got it. Got it. So everyone, I just send the email info at vcatechnology.com to everybody, right? If you have like more detailed questions about uh, the sales, the marketing, the materials, the spec, like like feel free to, to, to email to info at vcatechnology.com, okay? Also, just worth adding that our, if you go onto our website, you'll see the email links on our website and there's also a contact form at the bottom. You can get in touch with us the same way as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, these slides will be available as well. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, it's it's been a, a very great day. There's a lot of information. I, I was expecting just the VCA ads, but I also learned the yeah. retail trend and the VCA forensic, these are both ready. Uh, so it, it will be really great, guys. Like, like, like let, let's, let's talk about it offline. I think it's very worth having another sessions of webinar to talk about the VCA forensic and VCA retail trend because we, we, we got so many ways, so many different of devices to collect metadata. These two are the interface for us to understand the data. That's very important. Yeah. Sounds great. All right. Okay. Yeah. So everyone, thank Sounds you so much for joining the webinar. Yeah. Sorry, Kevin. Yeah, please. Pardon, Kevin. Would you like to say something? No, no. Just say yeah, that's a great idea. I think we've got a lot of applications. No, just to say, I was just agreeing with you, um, Jason. Let, let's arrange those those webinars. That'd be great. Got it. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. So everyone, thank you so much for joining the webinar. Uh, I think after one or two weeks maximum, we will have the recorded session available on our YouTube channel. I'll share with you again. Please feel free to share with your colleagues or partner who are not able to join the show. So uh, as Kevin mentioned at the very beginning, uh, later on in Las Vegas during IC West or in SECOM Seoul, Korea, we will be presenting this solution live. Right. So if you are in Tom during that period of time, please feel free to to visit us. We'll be more than happy to see you in person. OK.